yearbook ads. Um, I um, there will be yearbook ads coming out. There'll be an email at the end of this this week, so you'll have an opportunity not only to buy, you know, quarter page, half a page, full page, whatever you want, um, you know, for the pictures of your student, but other opportunities as well. So that look for that email at the end of this week. Um, the senior trip. Um, at the end, if you'll come up and get a copy of this letter, this will give you all the details. I will tell you that um, they're trying to keep the cost down. Trip for this year um, will be, I think it says $750 per student, paid in three installments. Um, but all the details of that are here. Mr. Snyder and Mr. Fentress work to get that ready for you for tonight. Um, capstone project, um, Mrs. New said today, please tell you all do not panic. She, she knows that she hasn't gotten to all the students, um, but she will be getting to every senior shortly and will assure them that they will get it done and it will be okay and she'll work with them to, you know, whatever it takes to be able to help them um, get that completed. Um, there are um, sheets that some of you, many of you, have already filled out and turned back in, so I appreciate that, but this is just another opportunity. If you haven't, if this hasn't made it home to you, or if you want to just sign an extra one just to make sure it made it all the way back to us, that would be awesome. This is, um, this is, you might recognize it, the full name of your senior so that it can go on the diploma. It's a full formal name, and then there's an authorization to release transcripts so that when um, the student goes online and requests through Naviance, you can, you will have permission to be able to send that out. Um, and just some other reminders um, about transcripts as you are going through this year. And then parent evaluations. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that, but for the students, there's a student evaluation. For the parents, there's a parent evaluation. So I'm, I've given the students out an evaluation or told them where to find it. And what I want for them, what are their dreams? What are things that they like to do? What are things they've been involved in? What has their capstone been? What, are the, you know, what kind of job, if they know it, do they want to do? Anyway, all of that, plus the adjectives you give me in this, um, will really help uh, both Ms. Kilburn and myself to be able to put together a strong letter of recommendation. Um, not every school requires a letter of recommendation, but often the Common App will require from, from the counselor, so that helps the counselors. Teachers write about what they see in classroom, but we write about how the student fits into the school as a whole and kind of what their, um, how they've done academically and also what their, uh, what their goals are and how we've seen that that might be a good fit. And if you all would like to schedule an individual meeting um, with either Ms. Kilburn or myself, we would welcome that if you haven't already. Um, we'd love to sit down with you and your student and um, see what you're thinking and then uh, maybe help to give other ideas about other schools if we can, you know, if there's some that we think maybe would also be good fits for, for your goals. Uh, college fairs are going to be coming up really soon, so I wanted you to be aware of those. Um, the TACRO Fair will be this year at Farragut. Farragut opens their arms to our students, so very thankful for that. It's going to be on October 3rd from 6.30 to 8.30. Um, that's the largest college fair in this area, um, so that would be a good one uh, to put on your calendar. January 25th, we have a regional college fair. S seniors by that point have pretty much finished their applications. But sometimes this will be a chance as they're narrowing it down to talk one more time to the colleges or to find out about financial aid opportunities or um, we have usually three booths also to help them um, with outside scholarships. And then the Christian College Fair, again Concord Christian School is sponsoring that. It's October 17th from 6.30 to 8.30. So that includes a lot of local schools like Lipscomb and King and Bell, um, let's see, um, Asbury and Lee, um, as well as schools from across the nation. So that's a good one to go to as well. And that's sponsored by the North American Coalition of Christian Admissions Personnel. So it's really important to define, and I hope you all have been talking about this um, even at this point, but what do you want out of college for your son and your daughter? So um, 
and, and uh, used this example for a couple of years. I don't know, some of you may have already heard this story because you've, you know, just I've had this example for a few years and if you've had one recently graduate, but um, it really impacted me. So I had, um, my son had a friend over for the weekend and we were all around the table playing this game of life and it had been a long time since I'd played it. How many of you have played that recently or are familiar with it? It's a great game. It's a fun game. But it suddenly struck me, you know, you're, you're rolling the dice, you're trying to get around the board, you're earning as much money as you can and you're earning big houses and big cars and, all, and that's, that's wonderful, but you can miss out a lot if that's, you know, if that's the whole focus. So that game kind of made me start thinking, encourage them to ask the right questions. So what is the most important about you and to you in your life? You know, certainly the goal of college should be to come out and be able to provide for yourself and your family, so the career, but it's also about character. Um, challenge your son or daughter to think about what they would like to be um, in 10 to 20 years. What kind of person, what kind of impact do they want to make in their community? And what decisions will help them to become that person? And again, what are you hoping uh, to get out of the college experience? So certainly a career, but also character. And different colleges will help you in different aspects of that. And you're more likely to get out of it if you've planned ahead for that. So the right questions to ask about colleges when you're visiting, is this a college that's going to advance me towards the person that I want to be? And do I see myself having appropriate challenge? as well as comfort at this college. Um, so by that I'm thinking about challenge academically but not so much that you are just you know doing nothing else and having no social time because we're talking about fit. Does the campus environment and the academic rigor of the programs and the engagement of the people fit me? Um, and I talked with the seniors about uh, personalities of colleges and gave them some examples of things um, to look for as they're visiting. So let's get down to some of the nuts and bolts and applying to schools. You, this is no surprise to you. Um, you know, it used to be that everybody filled out a paper application, then a few schools went to online. It's all online now, and it makes it so nice. However, um, the downside of that is often the student will just kind of rush through it and hit send. Uh, it's always a good idea because once you hit send, it's gone um, to to proof it um, and. Just like when I'm writing something, sometimes I can read over it a hundred times and not catch the error. So if somebody else looks, looks over it, they pick it out right away. So I encourage them to let you see it before it's sent. The common application um, is a good application to use if two or more of the colleges that the student is applying to um, use the common application. So. If you know that your son or daughter is going only to UT and as a backup it will be Pellissippi, then uh, University of Tennessee gives the option of either the common application or their own VIP application. Um, and my recommendation there would be just to do the VIP application because it's much simpler and straightforward. Um, however, if they're applying to University of Tennessee and let's say Belmont, both use the common application well, then you fill out one application one time and, and any school that accepts the common application will use that. Um, so at that point you would want to use the common application. Um, I have told the students that I'm available any lunch time or before school or after school whenever they catch me, but lunch time I kind of come in here early and take my lunch and finish at my office. and. It's pretty intuitive with the common application, but there's some places that you, that almost the first time you have to be shown, and I would love to sit down and do that with your students. Um, they should create a common application account if they're going to use it, and then when they go on Naviance, there's a place to use the same username, and they should do that. That's the only way the two programs match, so that when we send out through Naviance, it matches up in CyberCloud, whatever, matches up there and um, colleges can download everything they need. Um, fairly new is the coalition application. Some of you may have seen that. Um, it is still so new that only a few colleges are using it and, and I think it's only Florida State maybe that requires the coalition application. Um, the idea there is to get students who may not have the resources 
um, to be able to start in ninth grade and add things and build a, build a portfolio by using the uh, coalition application. Um, if you have a choice, then my recommendation would be to avoid that still for a few more years. They're working out the bugs, but they haven't worked out all the bugs yet. It's no surprise that if you have top grades, um, top test scores and a lot of activities, that's going to put you in a more favorable light to a school. Um, but there's a range of scores, so if your student's not a 4-0 student, um, there will still be a fit and a match. Um, our grading scale is a 4-0 grading scale. That will be one question that you'll see commonly on the application. They will ask you whether the grade uh, point average that, that is given is weighted or unweighted. We always give the weighted. Um, and that includes, you know, the extra point for AP and dual enrollment classes and the half point for the honors classes. This is where it pays off that they've worked hard and take, taken the more challenging classes. Um, and test scores. Um, more and more, you probably read about this, but more and more schools are going test optional. Um, it has only really started in the South. It's more a West Coast thing and a Northern thing, but it's, it's spreading. And so, I don't know, maybe it was High Point that just announced they were going test optional as well. So for students that are good students in the classroom, but may not do as well in testing, uh, it, you know, that's another resource you could look on there and see. Um, I think Furman is test optional as well. Um, and co-curricular activities, so anything done outside the classroom, which includes the capstone project. Um, students often come in saying, I don't have any leadership activities. But as we discuss it and talk through it, usually you can find some way, something that they've done. It may not, you know, they may not have been president of the, um, you know, student senate, but maybe they've led a, you know, a younger boys Bible study. Maybe they, in their church, you know, go take care of the nursery every week. I mean, there are other ways to be able to say leadership. The schools will look at what they call the sixth semester transcript, so that's all the grades through junior year. Um, occasionally, either if they're on the borderline or if they're a very competitive school and don't tell you till after the first of the year anyway, they will want a seventh semester or mid-year transcript. And so in January, as soon as those grades are out, we'll start sending those out for students who need those. Common application requires a mid-year transcript. But the senior year is important, not, um, you know, not so much on the grades. It's still really Im important because of the rigor of the, of the schedule. So colleges will also receive the schedule. So if students say, it only matters through junior year, so I'm going to try to take two study halls and do a TA. Um, we uh, challenge them on that and we uh, ask them to consider a more rigorous schedule. So. Standardized testing, so I'm sure probably all of the juniors have, have at least uh, one or two base scores at this point. And if not, don't worry, you have other opportunities. So the SAT, you know, has recently changed quite a bit to be a whole lot like the ACT. Um, so it's become more favorable to students. Um, and they have added a test uh, that's this Saturday. I don't know if any of your students are signed up for that, but there's also an October 7th, November 4th, and December 2nd test date for the SAT. And if you're applying to a fairly competitive school, many of them will require subject tests. So um, you might want to look very closely at the admission pages of any schools that your student's considering and, uh, and check for that so that you can sign up. Um, ACT, for most schools, they will accept either the September 9th or October 28th. I know for University of Tennessee, those are the two test dates they will wait on. Um, December 9th, it just depends on when they review it for scholarships. If you take the December 9th, you know, if you want one more chance to get your scores up for scholarships, they might consider the de December 9th. It just depends on the order that they're looking and reviewing your portfolio. And just as a reminder, SAT and ACT scores, each time you sign up, you have an opportunity to choose four colleges to have them sent to. And you can go back on those websites and find out as a reminder of where those have been sent. Um, and, but you can also go back in and, and request them that you, know, you log in just like you did to sign up and you um, click on send scores and then you can send scores to other schools. Um, any questions about the testing? 
All right, let's talk about teacher recommendations a little bit. Um, not every college requires letters of recommendation. Um, the University of Tennessee says that, and again, only because I've just been to their conference, so that's fresh on my mind and I know a lot of our students do apply there. So at the University of Tennessee, um, they say that if you're borderline, um, so any, anything under a three, three grade point average, um, or test scores, if they're anything under like a 28, then one letter of recommendation helps. Um, if you're on the other end and way, you know, way, way up there in grades and test scores, then you want one letter of recommendation because that will go towards scholarships. And whatever you send to admissions will also go to the scholarship committee. Um, some schools require two letters and they want, you know, from, from an academic source, from a teacher, they want it from a teacher who's had a chance to observe the student in the classroom. Um, and what they're trying to do is create a, a visual image of, uh, of your student beyond just what the grades and the test scores show. Um, on Naviance, I showed them and I will show you uh, in a few minutes the resume. So. Um, hopefully they've been building a resume on there all along because then it's really easy. You just print that out and then you can have it as you start to fill out the applications for colleges so it kind of keeps track of all the things you've been doing. Please ask them to see that because for them three years ago was a very long time when they were freshmen, you know, three. And so they might have forgotten some of the honors and awards but we parents, we don't forget. <laughs> so help them out with that or I know I had a, had a drawer where I kept those kind of things and I went and pulled them all out and we went through as we filled out the applications. Um, time frame to ask teachers or to ask us, it gets really busy in the fall. The teachers are busy with their classrooms, they're busy teaching. This is outside of the school day so make sure you give them at least three weeks notice because um, it takes, you know, if, if they're going to write a really good letter, which they try to do, and they do, um, then give them plenty of time to get that letter written. And it's a different, again, it's a different form than the one that comes back to the school counselors because we don't want all the letters to sound alike. And they're looking for things in the classroom, whereas we're presenting them as kind of a whole within the, within the whole student body. And uh, just uh, let, let, uh, let the teachers make sure that you appreciate what, uh, what they've done. Just a short thank you note is really all that it takes. Um, and secondary school reports. So the secondary school report, when you see that, it comes to the counselor. Um, yes. Sorry, sure. The school will specify. So the question is: Is it better if a teacher writes a letter of recommendation, or, or if the counselor writes a letter of recommendation? The schools will tell you what they want. Common application often it's both. So there's a place on the common application, although some schools have said it's optional so they don't make you do that. At one point, you couldn't send a common application without the teacher, uh, without the counselor letter of recommendation. They're, um, they're easing off on that a little bit. So um, if they want an academic letter, that is generally one from the teacher. How the student um, participates in class, um, how they stand out in class, you know, what kind of student they were, what stands out about them. Um, I've told the students this too, but the, to, they've already asked, uh, they, you know, told them first to go to the website of the school, to the admission page, and find out what's absolutely necessary. If they do um, ask, you know, if any one of their applications ask for two letters, then they should think about two academic teachers. Sometimes, um, uh, colleges will ask for, you know, if you are applying uh, for athletic scholarship, it doesn't hurt to have a, a coach's letter of recommendation. If you are applying to a Christian school, often they will ask for a youth pastor or a pastor's letter of recommendation. So just kind of, that's the kind of information you want to gather up front um, and plan for. And I've already told you how you can help us. Uh, if you, uh, and I've told the students too, and I'll tell you, when you fill that out, if you want to do it on a Word document or, or something, or even just straight from an email, um, and attach it in an email to us, that way we can print it off and put it in a folder and take it home with us, or if we're somewhere away and we have a few minutes, 
we can still look online if we have our computer with us and see it. So that's really uh, found that to be the most helpful. I want to talk about application plans um, because there's so many um, and I don't want there to be confusion on that. Uh, really the two that I want to make sure you understand the most clearly is early decision and early action. Um, so early decision is binding uh, and I High Point University I just borrowed there so the early decision the student would apply by November 1st and then they would hear as early as November 28th. Well that's wonderful gosh by November 28th then they can have that weight off their shoulders they can focus on scholarships they can you know focus on exams because you know, November and December are very busy months in school um, but here's the problem early decision is binding that means that once you get, a, get an acceptance letter from them you are obligated to withdraw every other application you've submitted whether you've had a chance to look at financial aid packages um, you know so it's a little less incentive for them to um, offer money so my recommendation is don't do early decision. We've had students that have, uh, that, you know, in recent years, one student that did that and then found out that he really had decided he wanted to go to another school. Early on he was most interested in that school and, and had to call the school, explain the situation. The school was really not very happy with us. As a matter of fact, they didn't visit us for a few years. And it's a school that, you know, our students like to go to. So just understand very clearly, avoid early decision unless you absolutely know that, you, that if they got in they would go there and finances are no problem. Early action however is just quite a gift because you can apply early action say November 14th you can know by December 16th at High Point and you know you still know before Christmas and you're not obligated. You can still wait and see what other financial packets you get from other schools and you still have a chance to visit a few more times and really see if the school is a good fit. Uh, regular decision for High Point, it, you apply by March 5th, which is really very late. I don't know many schools that have an application deadline that late unless they're rolling admission. Um, and they notify beginning February 1st, so that really is like a rolling admission. So rolling means that you can apply anytime, and as soon as they get everything together for you, they take it, um, they do a review on it, uh, so our admission counselor usually does the first review and then they send it on to a second review and then they'll let you know. Um, so two reviews, let's say one is a yes and one is a no, the third would be the tiebreaker and that usually goes to the Dean of Admission just so you'll know how that works in many places. Um, University of Tennessee's deadline is November 1st. We tell every, all of our students in your mind, November 1st is the last date to apply to colleges. That way, they're not going to miss any deadlines. Now, I, I want you to caution you though because there are a few schools like Georgia Tech that have something like an October 15th deadline. So don't think October, I mean don't take, think November 1st and miss an earlier deadline, but for the most part, November 1st is considered early and, um, and then work for that. So anywhere between September 1st and October 15th is a good range to shoot for for getting all these applications in. Uh, I want to talk about the WAVE question because that will come up. Um, so this is how it appears on Elon's form is I recognize the confidential nature of this document and I do or I do not waive my right to access. That usually refers to letters of recommendation. Let me assure you that Ms. Kilburn and I write a glowing letter for each student. Um, because we think there's something glowing to write about each student, okay? Teachers do the same thing. We train teachers every year. Teachers don't have to tell all. They need to think about the best parts and tell the best parts, and that's what, they, that's what we do. And colleges know that. We've had colleges come here to, to talk to teachers about letters of recommendation, and I think Tom Broadhead, who has been our longtime representative for UT, says, he tells the teachers, if you can't say nothing nice, don't say nothing at all. And he has a big picture of Thumper up on the board, so that's a good visual. The timeline, again, early September to mid-October with the absolute outside deadline being November 1st. It's not good to wait till November 1st to apply to a school whose deadline is November 1st if your computer has a glitch or if hundreds of thousands of people are trying to get their applications submitted all at the same time there, you might miss the deadline. 
if it's 1201 that's time time stamped anymore and that's missed the deadline so um, that's why again try to have it all done earlier than that um, but the real absolute deadline for UT of Knoxville is November 1st for scholarships and December 15th for regular admissions but we still want them done before then we don't want them fooling with applications while they're getting ready for Thanksgiving and exams all right the college visit and I've gotten a lot of emails about this um, I, f I found out about it probably about the time you found out about it and I understand the need for tightening up on the um, absentees um, it was um, you know being in school was taken a little too lightly last year so now it's really tight you know maybe we'll end up somewhere in that range but I did when I when I found out what it was I went to mr. Snyder and I said what about college visits he said what's well, within the eight I said what if you, you know you're going to New England and you're visiting a number of schools and that's a four-day trip or five-day trip and you get sick he said here's what we're going to do we're going to document we're going to get it approved ahead of time so that's through myself or Miss Kilburn depending on who your counselor if you've emailed I've um, made copies of the emails and I put it in the file here's another form if you want to pick up a few to send in that would be fine too but an email from you is fine um, you need to make arrangements with a college at least two weeks in advance um, and so they will also give you a note saying that your student was there have them bring that back and I'll put those two together and then if the unthinkable happens and they get a concussion that we've had way too many of <laughs> or they get mono or they get strep or whatever and have to miss more than those days they're not going to lose credit because I will absolutely go to bat for them and that would be in the handbook an extenuating circumstance so and a visit to campus should be the formal visit even if even if your student wants to match you know get together with a buddy afterwards and you know do the informal visit make sure you do um, at least the admissions you know um, part of the tour um, you will learn you will learn a lot of things uh, through that And it is, I can't stress, it is so important to get the overall feel of the campus. You cannot get that through a website alone. So I would recommend that you visit as, you know, before you apply. And then I would visit, once you're trying to narrow them down, I would recommend seeing if you can find someone who goes there and spending the night or a weekend, because you learn a whole lot more uh, about the students and, and the activities by doing that. The clearing house so for those that are doing sports you probably this is old hat to you I hope but um, if if you want to be considered for college athletics then you need to go to the clearing house uh, the NCAA clearing house or the NAIA clearing house we check that periodically and your name you know your child's name will, will show up and we'll send that six semester transcript and then we'll send a final transcript they're checking all along because they have requirements that they must meet in order to be able to play um, and you know it's changing all the time they've gotten a lot more strict about the requirements so make sure that you know um, you know make sure that you're on that website and um, review it and mr. Estes um, very happy that he is the new athletic director he's he's been my go-to person with questions about NCAA um, and uh, he's he's a wonderful person to be able to help explain things if you need need that now paying for college it's worth it it is worth it um, every year I, I get the latest um, Bureau of Labor Statistics um, about unemployment rates and earnings by educational attainment you know if student and you can see the unemployment uh, the lower the educational level the you know much higher the unemployment level is and um, the opposite is true the higher the degree uh, the more employable a, a someone a someone becomes and um, you know again the lower the wage the lower the educational level the higher the educational level the level the higher the wage so it's worth it uh, in many ways um, not just for preparing for a job but also for it's the last real chance to be in that uh, educational environment where you know you're the professors are challenging the students teaching them to think stretching their mind introducing them to new things that would just plain as Carson Newman as the president said make them more interesting people 
so financial aid information so Monday September 12th um, here again Mrs. Uh, Rita Torchetta of the TSAC Corporation is going to come and do a financial aid presentation my apologies to those of you who have girls on the soccer team uh, I know that that's a conflict and I'm really I'm really sorry about that I had talked to her last year and we put this date on the calendar but um, this date um, came on the calendar a little bit late and we looked, I, I emailed her and I said, could we do it the 13th? Could we do it the, and she's, she's so booked up already. So we'll do the same thing. Um, Warrior Broadcasting Network has agreed to um, video this for us. So if you missed that, um, we'll be glad to, you know, you can go back on and watch it again. And I am happy to meet with any of you to, uh, to go over it uh, or to explain anything you need explained. It's Tuesday. Thank you. Tuesday, September 12th. Thank you for catching that. Um, that's why you need to proof. <laughs> this was last year's updated. Last year's apparently was on a Monday. Thank you, Ms. Burns. Is this another evening? It is another evening. Mm -hmm. It's going to be 7 as well. It's, I always do it at 7. I just think it gives, gives me time to eat and set up. Hope it works well for you. Try to keep it to an hour or, or less. This was interesting. I hope you find this interesting. So the average percentage of total costs paid from each source, um, you know, research studies show that 32% paying for college comes out of the parent's pocket, income and savings. 11% student helps to contribute to. 16% is student borrowing. 6% parent borrowing. And with Dave Ramsey, he would say zero borrowing, right? Um, 30 percent, so, so obviously these 16 percent of students and 6 percent of parents have not taken that course. 30 percent come from scholarships and grants and 5 percent from relatives and friends. Let's hope in our case that it's a higher percentage of scholarships and grants. Our students tend to do pretty well. So the Tennessee Promise, um, first two years of college is free um, if you attend a your local community college or tech institute or some of the private four-year schools um, have it built in so you you know if you're considering that you can look and see what they offer South College has made a great deal they because they were losing students to the Tennessee Promise um, they have a great package that includes at least that much money towards their cost of education as well um, so more information is from TennesseePromise.gov. Um, it is. For students who would be considering um, a two-year school anyway, well, hallelujah. You know, um, some schools, if, you're, if the path is two years knowing that you're going to go to a four-year institute, some schools don't give scholarship money in that third and fourth year if you go somewhere else the first two years. So you really have to be careful and look at the whole packet. Now, I was really surprised um, at the University of Tennessee conference this past week. Um, they, for the first time, students who've come through the Tennessee Promise program, they will make eligible based on grades and test scores again for scholarships so they won't miss out. If they would have been eligible for $5,000 a year if they started as a freshman, they can keep that junior and senior year, so that's awesome. The academic common market. Some of you may be familiar with this, but the Southern, see if I say this, Southern Region Educational Board um, has a program with all, with all of, with the states in the Southeast so that if, for instance, in Tennessee, there's not a major offered that your son or daughter wants, but it's offered in Kentucky, then you can apply for this and you can get in-state tuition for Kentucky. Um, so we've had uh, an alum who used that to go to Kentucky, I think in horticultural something, um, and that was something she was interested in anyway, so got, uh, got the in-state tuition in Kentucky. Several of our students have used this for marine science, marine biology, and gone to schools either in Alabama or Wilmington, North Carolina. So that's something you might want to just go on that website, kind of play around if your student has said I want to go to a, an SEC school, but I don't want to go to Tennessee. Might open up some options. 
and it's not all majors and not all schools but it's worth taking a look all right so parent roles um, in family time it's great to talk about the financial and geographical limitations if you are not comfortable with your student being in Hawaii set those boundaries <laughs> if I showed you the map Hawaii would show up as the place that, that one of our students attended you know the trick there was her uncle um, lived on that island so what an opportunity um, talk about talk about financial you know don't uh, make sure that they know that um, you know we plan for our college our students education but you know money doesn't grow on trees and there's a reasonable expectation that you know they're going to work to help and you're going to do what you can to help them get an education they need but you're going to have to work together and if an in-state tuition um, is within the budget and a private school education is not then they're great public education you know available so um, you know be having those conversations I will tell you on that note though I don't think I've got it elsewhere in this um, there are some schools that will look at you know you'll fill out the FAFSA uh, we will talk more about this at the financial aid night but the FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid um, and that will send back to you your expected family contribution so what that means for those of you who are going through this for the first time is that they're going to expect you to pay more than you can fathom however they won't expect you to pay more than that and um, many colleges will say so we're gonna make up the remainder but the balance between what you what we think you can pay and the cost total cost of attendance and we're gonna give you opportunities to take out loans or we're gonna give you a small grant here so loans you look for that because that's not the good word that's not the word you want to hear Vanderbilt and Davidson and a few other um, pretty high-end schools say we're gonna look at the expected family contribution and we're gonna cover the rest yeah um, Vanderbilt really stepped out in trying this University of Virginia and Davidson and a few other schools were trying this with success and so Vanderbilt stepped out on a limb in 2008 said we're going to do this and then in October I think is when all the problems started with the uh, with the crash and so they said well we said we're gonna do this we're gonna see what happened but Vanderbilt has such a good alum support system and a good endowment that it's that it's really worked for them and they've been able to then reach not just the very very top wealthy but you know much broader range of students to to help that um, university be a little more diverse make sure you discuss the desired goals from the college experience we talked about that a little earlier um, parents attend the college fairs and college visits um, with your students see what you think as well um, I will tell you that when I was taking my kids on college visits I wanted to be I wanted to be the person right next to the tour guide and asking all the questions well I have since found out from all the colleges uh, luncheons and things where they tell us what they like and what they don't like they really don't like us parents when we stand right next to them and ask all the questions they want the students so um, anyway I uh, I did a faux pas but just you can learn from my experience um, so what you do is you coach your student beforehand and have them go stand up next to the admission person they ask the questions that you've coached them to say say the ones you want to know now college fairs are a little different sometimes you go in you each get a bag and that's the last you see them till the appointed meeting time later and then you can both go around and ask your own questions if you want to and each come up with a bag and that's fine um, help your student gain independence um, so if you know you're sitting there if he's trying to figure it out or she's trying to figure it out and they can't quite have them come see us because when they're at college you're gonna to have to be comfortable going to an adult and asking questions and you won't be there to ask those questions for them so um, by the time they get to be seniors they're really pretty great about that but encourage them to do that not to be shy uh, and then prayer support your prayer support means everything to them because that's where God's gonna give that little still voice saying this is the way um, so just remember that if you train up a child in the way he should go even when he's old he won't depart from it so begin to trust your Heavenly Father with your most treasured possessions yeah it's this is a really hard time for those parents that have a child a year ahead of yours you know but uh, 
but it's it's really great because it's it's a loss for a period of time but then as they start to come home you will have a friendship and a bond that will you know be stronger than ever and it's a joy you know as your student becomes an adult to have that relationship all right hang on it's senior year it's a roller coaster cover your ears <laughs> um, it's even the most stable um, young people you know if you if it's always just been really stable if you start noticing a lot of emotional ups and downs I'm gonna tell you they might notice it new as well expect that don't let it catch you by surprise um, it is um, a time of uncertainty because let's face it your home is all they've ever known right and you've always been there to be able to take care of every little thing you know help them at least talk it talk through it so it's going to be very different um, but it's part of that growing it's like the chrysalis you know and the caterpillar having to struggle to come out beautiful this is this is all part of that so it's going to be great I promise you so students role um, is to contact the college or university for any reason so parents I know it's tempting to pick up the phone and just ask that question because it's easy and you're thinking of it um, I have had colleges tell us that they have a folder and if a parent calls they put an X in the folder I don't think every college does that and um, it's more of this generation you know that parents are involved more than ever so that you know I heard that about five years ago I don't think every college does that but they really love it and a check mark might go in that folder if you can coach your student to make that phone call instead or if they want to come in our office we'll coach them through it if we don't know the answer we'll help them you know say this is this is what you should say and how you should ask it and all of that so make it a learning opportunity and then student can make the decision based agreed upon options they're the ones that are going to live there for four years if it's within your means and you've agreed on it it's not your top choice you know you need to respect them and and, and um, you know it's your top choice at least have those discussions um, don't write the essay don't do their application colleges can tell right away they would rather have a bad essay that they can tell was done by a student than a perfect essay that they can tell was really polished and written by an adult so I mean they tell us that all the time so passing that along as well all right I uh, want to spend just a few moments on Naviance to demystify the process we've got a I'm a B student is actually a character from the college board uh, we use that with our PSATs but so I'm gonna um, so but I'm gonna go through that with you but I did want to give you the information so if you want to um, make a, you know come in and talk with either Miss Kilburn or myself please feel free to do that transcripts Mrs. Uh, Hauser is the one that sends out all transcripts so you can contact her um, directly but again right for now the process is to go through Naviance that way we have a record and I'm going to show you that so I'm going to get out of this one and this is when you go to the login page you, um, I didn't have anything to do with this parents so just know that but students have a login and you have a login students can request a transcript parents can't I can't even do it they used to allow counselors to do it so if you'd call and I needed to send it out through Naviance I could go in and add the college and send it that way they took away our our rights as well so students have to do this and we've shown them how but um, again during lunch any day um, I can help and I, I've been doing that every day helping students um, to do that so I'm going to log in as I'm a B student and it's not going to let me so I'm going to do a back door all right so this is this is my page so let me show you a few things when I go to Naviance when I log in it will give me this nice circle and do you see that little sliver that's gray those are students that have requested an app uh, requested a transcript at this point it's been sent so it's a little higher than it was when I came around to the classes but it's 7.4 percent that's you know this is early 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 August so that's about right 92 percent it's not that they haven't applied but it's just that we're still gathering all the data to be able to send things off so by November 1st what will that be a hundred percent yeah we're going for a hundred percent I'm I'm going 
going to go to the student now. And this is, this is what I pull up when I go to the student. This is what I see. So if I want to see the colleges that they're, that they're applying to, I can see, uh, see that. If I want to see the resume, I click on resume. Ah, I've got to talk to the student because there's no resume. But um, I can show them how to do that so that it appears and then that will jog my memory. That's right. I remember, I remember the football game when this student you know, went and shook the opponent's hand or helped them get up from the field or, you know, whatever it is. Um, uh, this, there's a way for me uh, to look. You all can log on scholarships or if you give them to us, as those start coming in, we can log them in as well. The journal, um, I, I encourage students, there's a place where they can log into a journal as they visit colleges because I'm going to tell you, especially if you visit several in a row, they all kind of get fuzzy. Think, which, which college was it that said they had? So if you can take notes as you go along about things that you liked at the school and didn't like, then you can refer back to them. I'm going to go to the student's page. Oh, I'm going to go back here for a minute. So you know when you get these, these forms into me, then I edit the student profile and I go all the way to the bottom, and now the parent has authorized release. So. If it's not authorized, then you can't even request a transcript. But once we change that to authorized, then a transcript can be sent. All right, now I'm going to... All right, so this is a page that the seniors see. There is, as I probably showed you last year, the document library. If you go there, then it's alphabetical, all these folders, and if you go down to College Recommendation Letter, and we're still updating these, so I apologize, some of them are out of date, but this, the College Recommendation Letter, Parent Evaluation, so you can pick one up here, or you can go in Naviance and find that, or Student Self-Evaluation, or if a teacher requests it, um, you know, if they think they need a little more information, you can fill out the teacher evaluation for them. And then going back to the home page. Um, so for juniors, it was always colleges I'm thinking about because that was a great way to explore, but now it's colleges I'm applying to, and I'm gonna go through this page to do it. You can do letters of recommendation directly or colleges I'm applying to. And it shows Belmont and Wheaton, just two examples. Um, this student is applying, remember the EA, what's that? Early action. That's, that's the good one. Don't want early decision. Um, and then it shows that they, each of these schools takes a common application. Great, only have to fill out one application and it's done. I'm gonna send them to both schools. Um, some of them give the deadlines. There's not a request in it. Um, so I'm going to request a transcript. And then I can add request and add request. And then that sends the request and then Ms. Hauser checks every day, or if it's a common application, I check and I send all the materials at the same time. Um, we don't include unofficial ACT or SAT scores um, simply because most colleges want them directly from the agency. And then it confirms. So now uh, I can, you can see that when it was requested, I'm going to go back to colleges that I'm applying to. And now it tells me that they've been requested. And um, it says pending. See, I've done this example for a couple of people. It really shouldn't say initial materials submitted yet. It should say pending. And then it will say when it's been submitted. Um, once the student gets that acceptance letter from the school of their dreams, they can go in and choose the school that they will be attending and updating. And that's a way to notify us. Um, also, um, the common application, I'm going to, I'm just going to say it's not needed, but when you go on this page, um, the first thing you'll see is a big box where you have to put in the email address for common application. And once you do that, it shrinks down to this size. Since I've already used this student as an example, it's not showing for you. Um, 
Also on the bottom of that page, letters of recommendation. So you can click on that page for letters of recommendation and it allows a student to add a request. So who do you want to write the letter? You've got the choice of all the teachers. So let's say we choose Miss Daves and we say that her letter can be sent to any college I apply to, which is probably the best response. And then here, dear Miss Daves, thanks for agreeing to, because they've already asked in person, thanks for agreeing to write my letter of recommendation. I plan to have all my applications in by September 1st, so uh, I would appreciate it if you could be working on my letter and update it to Naviance and then submit. And then that's uh, so the student is asked both verbally and then this is the reminder, so they have a written reminder as well. More. Yes. Hey, was there a screen just a minute ago that has a place where you can match up the students? Naviance user ID with the, the yes. username that, that they chose when they started the common app? Yes. Okay. And so it's um, here's what you do. So you're on the home page. It's obviously colleges. We're talking about colleges. And colleges now, it's colleges I'm applying to. And the problem is, for this student, I already said not needed. It's already been done. So it's so it's gone to the little box, but it'll be big and prominent, and you won't even see letters of recommendation on there until you shrink that. And the way you shrink the box is just to add the email that the student used with their common app. Go home and ask them to open it up and to show you, because now, now you know how to show them to do that. And, um, and I... Any questions about Naviance? I'm trying to think if I'm leaving out anything really important for you to know. You said parents have an account too? Parents have an account. So I don't know my password, I mean, I So email Ms. Hauser. <laughs> um, Ms. Hauser can look that up and just send, send it to you, or she can send you a link. Or if you're in the school, stop by and see us, and you can just type it in manually. Um, and if you ever forget how to pull Naviance up, um, go to the CAK Warriors. And then, you know, they have an A through Z menu. Go to N for Naviance, click on that, and then bookmark it or save it as a favorite or whatever your computer allows you to do. And m most of the time when they go in, their username and password gets saved, so you don't even have to really think a lot about that part. Um, that was a great question. Anybody else have a question about Naviance? Yes. So the um, resume on Naviance is just a refresher list. It's not a formal. I um, you you would see an extra name in the A's. You may have noticed that. Um, I had someone ask me to help her um, with a resume, and so um, I created an account for her and showed her how to go in and do that. Let me show you. So that's about me. It's, it's kind of intuitive, so about me, but you have to scroll down a ways to find it. There it is, resume. And then, it's fairly, it's really easy to create. You can just hover over that. It gives you all kind of categories. You don't have to do each one, but let's say, let's say your students had a job, so we'll go to work experience. So you enter then the position title, the organization, as much as it, of this as you can, and then it puts it together for you. So I'm going to go, let me go back and I'm going to show you what I created for um, her. So she went in and just entered um, a lot of the things that she had done. And it creates kind of a, an easy resume format. But that's mainly for refresher to go to your common app. It, two things. If you are applying for a job, you know, if they're looking for a part-time job, it's really easy to print that off and it's plenty good enough, you know, for a high school, you know, after school job or summer job. So it's good for that. It keeps it all together in this account. It's for the, every teacher can view this and, and the counselors can view it. So if they want to 
think, Let's, let me try to remember all I can. And they go in there and they say, oh, wow, how did he do that? How did he make an A in my class and work, you know, 20 hours a week outside or, you know, whatever. So that gives them, gives teachers something to write about. Some teachers will not do a letter of recommendation until you've done the resume. Um, but it's, then you can also print it out and have everything handy for the Common App. So, um, I'm sure you all are pretty good with the ACT and SAT. You've been through this before. You probably know all the tutors, but I, I do keep a list in the office. If anybody has any interest, um, you can contact us. And are there any other questions? Because you all will help each other with the questions. All right, well, I'm, yes, Ms. Jokes. Will it say on there what colleges will take common action? Yeah, um, good question. Let me go back. Let me actually go to I'm a B student again. see if it's going to allow me to add a college. So colleges I'm applying to. Let me add to the list and let me choose. There's a place to look up and that gives you a long list of schools. This comes from having a number of people apply. Um, let me go to Bryan College and the reason I'm going to go to them is they're not a common app school so I can show you the difference. So I'm adding that, and now suddenly you have two, these are computer screens, two computer screens with a red CA for Common App, and one, I can send it electronically, and you can send it electronically, but it's not a Common App school. They're going to have their own um, application. Can you get to their application from Naviance, or do you have to go to their website? You have to go to the school's website. Oh, but Naviance, well, I say that, but let's say Belmont. I'm going to click on Belmont. And now I can go to Belmont directly by clicking on the link here. But this is, this is kind of a synopsis of pictures from the school and the cost and the graduation rate. By the way, one of the really good things when we go, when I've taken students before to colleges and we've done a scavenge hunt, but I said one of the things that's really good to look for is retention rate, particularly from freshman to sophomore year. I think that tells you as much about whether students can find a place and, and really fit in well to a school as anything. Um, public schools, you know, large publics, the, the retention rate is going to be a little bit lower maybe than, a, than private schools um, because they take more students. Private schools can generally narrow it down a little bit to make sure it's a good fit. So um, just because a private school has a little bit higher retention rate doesn't necessarily mean, but, but it is a good indicator. Sometimes you really have to search for that on a website. But it's a good thing to know. And good thing to ask when you're, when you're visiting schools. Graduation, you know, what percentage of your students graduate in four years versus five years? six years or not at all and then what's the retention rate from freshman to sophomore year great questions anybody else if not again um, would love to set up a meeting if you know if you all have time or have other questions but uh, you've got a great group of seniors this year so it's it's going to be a good year and I look forward to working with them and with you so thank you for coming